Hi guys, today I'm going to do a tutorial on WordPress and how important it is to secure your WordPress content management system. So I read online something like 20% of all websites are hosted by WordPress. I couldn't believe it was that high of a number. If you're not familiar with WordPress, it allows people who are very experienced in web development to anyone that is brand new to web development to create a very professional looking website. The only problem with WordPress is it's um, always having vulnerabilities. I have had sites that I support being compromised because the version of WordPress had known vulnerabilities and I did not update it in time. So it's really important that you actually know when there's a new update and when you should be uh, putting out the latest version of WordPress. And it's really easy to upgrade your WordPress content management system, but knowing when there's a new release out is really key. So I found a nice way that I could easily get notified when there's a new release out versus what I'm currently running on my current content management system. So the version of WordPress I am currently running on my um, end user site versus what is the latest version, the latest stable version putting out, being put out. So today I'm going to show you how to go ahead and use Nagios to be able to monitor the version of WordPress you're running and also know what version is the latest version out. So it's a great tool to be able to just tell you on one location and you can set this up for all the web servers that are running content management systems, all your uh, WordPress instances, you can go ahead and set this up for all of them and monitor each one individually to make sure that your site and all your um, sites hosted with WordPress are being secure, has the latest version of WordPress running on it, so your sites are not being exploited and malicious code or, um, you know, bogus ads or bogus links are being put on your site that your customer or your end users did not want there. So just keep watching and I'll help you secure your WordPress website today. So here's our first WordPress site. I just set this up really quick. I downloaded a slightly older version of WordPress, so I made sure there was an update available. So I went ahead and set up a database and I installed Apache and everything to get this going. And when I first log in with my admin account to my WordPress install, right away it does say there is a newer version available, WordPress 4.7.5. So update now. So the issue is, unless you come here and see this, you might not know that. Unless you go to the WordPress.org site, you might not know there is an update available. So it's really about being aware that there is a new version out that you probably should take a look at it um, and occasionally knowing if what are the critical updates. So this is the um, plugin I'm going to use to check the version of WordPress and to let me know if there's a new version available. So it'll give me some information about um, some of the different options, the core, if there's a new core WordPress or a theme, it will let me know. So I'm going to go ahead and download it on my client. So I'm downloading it to my Linux server running the WordPress install. So this is going to be considered our Linux client. I already have this pre-configured to be a Nagios client. I'll link a video uh, video here that point to you how to initially do that configuration because I already have something called the uh, Nagios remote plugin executor configured on here. So because I do have that, all I have to do is take my plugin that I just downloaded and I'm going to put it into the Nagios folder, the Nagios plugin folder on my Linux server running the WordPress install. And it's going to be, um, this is my path, user uh, lib64. And I'll put all this in the path link uh, comments below. So I'm copying it there, this script, and I'm going to run it on the command line. So this is, it's lib64 Nagios plugin is the path. So once I have a copy there and I tested it on the command line, I like to know it works. So then I'm going to go into user local Nagios, and this is where I can find the configuration file for the Nagios remote plugin executor. So here's the configuration file. If I go into VI, I'm going to define a new command in this. So a new command. So I have some of my commands that are even pre-configured when you initially install this um, plugin, this remote executor to run plugins. So I'm going to create a new line here. I want to call it check WordPress. So I created a command called it check WordPress. I gave it the path, user loop 64 Nagios plugin, and then that's the um, executable that's going to run. And that's the path to where the WordPress um, instance is um, files are located. 
So if you have multiple WordPress instances, that it's not a problem. You could just configure either multiple commands um, and then specify a different path. So you could easily do that if you have multiple WordPress instances running. But um, so yeah, so as long as you have the path correct, and I, again, test it on the command line, make sure it works correctly on your client first before we can go to the Nagio server and configure it on there to come here and check um, that our WordPress, check WordPress version is running correctly and that it will run correctly connecting to the Nagio server. So once all that is configured correctly, we can go back to our Nagios server and you don't have to open up the web interface on the server, but I did here. So I'm running it on the server here. So that's why it's localhost slash Nagios. And I wanna go look specifically at our Linux server running the web services with the WordPress instance running. So if we take a look at that, we can see the current services being monitored. So I'm monitoring web services in addition to some of the basic, you know, processes and uh, disk and swap space and all the normal stuff to monitor. But in addition, we're monitoring web services, but we're going to add a new service to monitor, and that's going to be the WordPress service. So to do that, we're going to have to go into the server command line, and we're going to go into the Nagio server configuration files, and we're going to actually call back to the Nagios remote plugin executor on the Linux client, the web server running WordPress. So if we go to our configuration files, user local Nagios etc. These are where all our files are really located that we're going to define our client and the commands to run on our client. So the first thing we want to do is um, do a bi on commands.conf config. And we're going to add define a new command here. So this command is going to be a remote, um, call the remote, not just remote plugin executor on the Linux server. So we're going to go ahead and add a new line here. And if you don't know the syntax, I mean, there's tons of examples here. I just kind of follow the syntax along. So we're going to define command. And you can give it a command name. Technically, um, I could have done it with... Um, one of the pre-existing commands, but I do kind of like having a command for each different service. That's my preference, but of course, you, I could have easily done it with one of the other commands calling the Nagios remote um, plugin executor, but I'm just going to create a new one here. So I'm going to call it command name uh, check WP underscore WP command line command underscore line and we're going to point it to um, user one which is really just a path it's pointing to a path user one slash and check underscore nrpe hyphen host host address and then argument one so we're going to the host address will be the ip address or the host name of the web server running wordpress minus C, now that's going to be taking a single argument. So that argument is going to be the command that the Nagios remote um, plugin executor will run. So if you remember back on our Linux client, we called it um, check underscore WP. Okay, we, we called it the same thing here. It does not have to be called the same thing here, the command and what you called on Linux. I did that just because it's consistent for me, but of course it could have easily been changed. So we're gonna call it minus C argument one. And when we define it on the Linux client configuration in Nagios on the Nagios server in the Linux client configuration file, we're gonna be calling that and I'll show you that right now. So let's go take a look at that file. So in the same directory as commands, um, you can have a file called Linux client config. So this is, again, I have, will have a link here that shows how to do this whole configuration. So again, this is all relatively easy stuff to do. If you know a little bit of Linux command line, you can easily get these services and servers being monitored up and running without much problems. So let's go ahead and open up our uh, Linux client configuration file, now use configuration files. Now we're going to define the service. The service is going to call the command that we just defined. So there's a check command here if you see some of the other examples. So we're going to define a new service. And this service 
is what's going to appear on the web interface. This is the link sign. This is what's going to be used. So we're going to use um, local service. A lot of these are um, pre-existing template things. Host name. So that's um, the fully qualified. The host name could be IP address as well. Serve description. This is what's going to appear on the web interface. So if you want a certain um, heading on the Nagios web interface, then this is where you would add it here. So I'm just going to call it WP version. So once we define what's going to be called on the web interface, we're going to go ahead and do the check command. So again, this is what we define in the commands file in the previous file we just edited. And I will come back and edit this. I actually forgot to put in the argument. So the next line I put in is uh, enable notification. So you, I did enable notification here. I don't know if this is something that's what you need to be paged with. It might be something you see or your operators might see. After that, a lot of data centers might have the Nagios window running so they could see the services status um, at the operations desk at all times. That might be something um, you might see when you're looking at that. I don't know if you necessarily need to be paged. And then what group to contact. So the Linux admin, maybe you have the web development team or a Windows admin team or whoever it might be that's managing um, your web server on your data center running the WordPress instance. So this is where I actually went back and I forgot to put in the argument. So the exclamation and the first um, field after that is the argument, the minus C part. And that's the command that's going to be sent back to the client. So the first one is the check WordPress on the server defining the command. The second one is what's being run on the Linux client running the WordPress instance. Now let's go ahead and we're going to restart the Nagios service on our Linux uh, client running the Navi Nagios server. If all the configuration files come back correct, you should just get a stop and start message like this. If there's any syntax errors, you will get a um, long list of error messages. So just be careful with your editing. I usually like to make a backup before I make changes to configuration files. Um, Git is a good way to do those backups using GitHub, but um, that's a different tutorial. So we got our WordPress service now being uh, listed. We don't have to try to force it here to do an update. So if it comes back in a few minutes, it actually says critical updates available. So there you go, guys. It's telling me I need to go update my core, not WordPress instance. And definitely, definitely worth my time so I don't get compromised again. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Definitely monitor your WordPress versions and don't be a victim of malicious code or cross site injects or boot fortis attacks on your site or SQL injections because it's constantly, constantly being berated on all websites. So definitely keep on it. And I know as a system administrator, it gets tedious, but it's really just part of the job. And just being able to monitor with Nagios makes it just that much easier. So definitely give it a try. So I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.